today we're going to go over tapping. So I want to show you a couple song examples and just kind of talk about the technique in general. So as always, I'll be talking for about 30 minutes of lesson and then a 15 or so minute Q&A. So feel free to ask me questions throughout this lesson. These are live, so I'm speaking to you directly if you're watching live. And if not, if you're catching this later on YouTube, make sure you leave a comment about anything that you want to learn and you might find it in one of these videos with me or one of our other awesome instructors on Guitar Control to YouTube. So make sure you go to youtube.com slash guitar control and subscribe. So say hi if you can see me on Facebook or on YouTube and then we will get started. So I don't know about you guys, um, but tapping is one of my favorite things to do. I think it is so fun. It's just such a cool technique and um, you know, it's kind of, you've seen it with all the greats and there's all, all sorts of things that you can do with it. So I like to add in kind of tap slides and things like that and we'll talk about all of these things. So make sure you say hello and we will get started. Awesome, I see you on YouTube. Hi, how are you? Cool, and thank you to all the people that tune in every week. It is so cool to see the same people coming in and checking these out and um, learning every week. So I really appreciate that. All right, so um, let's go ahead and make sure we go ahead and get started. So my first example is just a kind of Randy Rose example. Uh, I'm gonna start with just a simple tap. So I'm going to be on the fifth fret first string. And I'm gonna be tapping with my pointer, or my middle finger actually. I use my middle finger so that I can still hold on to that pick. So I use that so I'm not switching like a lot. So I like that, I think it's really convenient. Depends as you go on, if you're doing multi fingers and everything like that, you might wanna change your technique. There's other ways to hide the pick and stuff like that, but I really prefer to use that middle finger so I can switch right back into a lick if I need to. So pointer on the first string, fifth fret, and then my pinky going to the eighth fret. So I'm going. And tapping's really interesting because when you slow it down, you can actually really hear what you're doing. So sometimes it's tempting to just jump in and try to go crazy, but you wanna really slow things down and make sure you're doing them right. So what I'm doing is I have my finger already placed on the fifth fret. I use my tapping finger to tap, pull off. So I press it down and pull it off the string. And the string doesn't go crazy because I have that pressure from my left hand or my fretting hand holding down that fifth string, or sorry, fifth fret, first string. And then after that pull off, I slap my pinky down on the eighth fret. And I repeat this. And the more comfortable you get, you can go faster. So let me know if you're following along and you're trying this out. This is a lot of fun, this lick is cool. And remember, as always, try to make these licks your own. So it's really cool to learn other people's stuff, but you wanna make sure that you're taking these things and making them your own. Um, hi, Glenn, hi, GB, hi, Chris. Wow, from London, um, Wisconsin, cool. That's awesome. Hey, everybody, if you're on Facebook, say hi too. Facebook always has a slight delay. So if I didn't say hi or see ya, um, go ahead and say hi now. So grab your guitars. I am in standard tuning today. So let's make sure, cool, I can see it. Um, hi, Jeffrey, hi, Robert, cool. All right, so make sure that you're grabbing your guitars and playing along. So let's go over that really quick again. Put your pointer finger on the fifth fret, first string, pinky. And this whole lick is gonna be on the first string. So just so you know, these are all just fret numbers. So pinky reaching out to um, the eighth fret. And I'm not using my pick at all. Then the next note, I'm gonna actually keep my fretting hand the same, but I'm gonna change my tap note. So. And if that's not like a Randy Rhodes sound, I don't know what it is. That is the most Randy Rhodes thing ever when you just do that little half step switch. So remember, take that from Randy and make it your own. So on your licks, try that out and see what it sounds like. All right. Then we're actually gonna move, so after those two, so five to eight in our fretting hand tapping, 12. Then tapping, um, 13. Now I move my pointer to the third fret first string and my pinky's gonna come all the way out to the seventh fret. So this is gonna be a bigger stretch. So this one might feel a little bit harder and that's fine, that's normal. Um, and I'm gonna move my tapping hand to the 10th fret. So just like that, 
And then the next one, our change, instead of moving our tapping hand, we're gonna bring our pointer in a half step. So it's gonna move from the third fret to the fourth. And then I just end with a. So I tap and then hammer on to uh, fourth fret to fifth. And that's where I stop. So again, we're gonna start with this. And that's it. So I think that's kind of a nice intro to kind of get you into tapping, see what it's like, break it down, slow it down, and see how it feels. All right, I'm gonna check on you guys, see if you have any questions. Hi, Andrew. Awesome. Hi, Raymond. Very cool. So let me know tapping legs that you guys like too, what you've been working on. I always like to kind of incorporate taps in my playing one way or another. Hi, Kip. Um, cool. Thank you, Raymond. So I like to incorporate them. Thank you, Denny. I like to incorporate them in just different ways too. So like I said, make these licks your own. Do your own thing. That's what the goal is, not to sound just like somebody else. It's never to sound just like somebody else, um, no matter how awesome they are. But to take these ideas and see what you can create. So, you know, I've talked about this before, but when I bend, sometimes I'll grab a note and just kind of do that, maybe a little tap there. Or if I'm playing with, I like to kind of mess around with tapping and change it up. Or a tap slide. So the next song I'm going to show you is a song that I really love. It really inspired a lot of my playing. It's just the intro, um, but it's from one of my favorite guitar players. So it's called Green Tinted. Green Tinted 60s Mine from Mr. Big, which is Paul Gilbert's old band, um, well, current band too, if you listen to him. And um, that song for me, I just thought it was so cool to see a technique that I had known, but done in a totally different way. And kind of what I'm always trying to say, like thinking outside the box and pushing into new directions. So what he does is he does a tap slide. And the minute I heard that, I just thought it was the coolest thing ever and I just had to do it. Um, so I'll show you that. And I thought that would be a good example today. I want to show you guys some different ways to tap, not just all the same ways or just several licks that sound the same, right? We want to kind of take different approaches. Hopefully these inspire you in your other licks. Um, thank you, Sean. That's really cool. I really appreciate that. Awesome. Um, cool. Uh, how do you learn the footboard itself? Oh. Um, Andrew, that's a good question. So Andrew's asking, how do you learn the fretboard itself? Obviously, I think time really helps, but learning the notes helps. And just the more you play, the more familiar you do get with the fretboard. But I think notes, I'm a big fan of, I really do believe, no matter how much theory you do or do not know, that you should know the notes on the sixth and fifth string. This will just make your life so much easier, especially if you're sight reading or reading a chart really quickly. You're able to put chord progressions together fast. You're able to find the key that you need to be in. Just really, it will help you so much. Um, it's kind of a long question for me to get into right now when we're trying to focus on tapping, but it's a good suggestion for an entire lesson video. I've done other lessons pretty similar. So if you check out our YouTube, youtube.com slash guitar control, you will see a lot of things around the same subject, but um, you learn it by, you need to stop counting. I think the first thing you need to learn is what notes the dots fall on, at least on the sixth string. So I think that will help you a lot. And I don't know how much you know about theory, but the musical alphabet, there are whole steps and half steps. There's a couple natural half steps. Hopefully this doesn't sound like a crazy person because I'm trying to do it really fast. But um, if you look at it on the piano, much easier. It's literally black and white. The white keys being just your A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Your black keys being your sharps or flats. So um, when, you're, when you're doing theory and stuff, you go musical alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And then we repeat, but our natural half steps are between B and C and E and F. So if you want to just count full steps or count just what the white keys would be, you would know that this note is E, E to F half step, G to whole step, A whole step, B whole step, C natural half step, D whole step, repeat at E. But I would kind of start there and try to learn those, but also just knowing that the, you know, on this guitar, I have a dot on the first marker, but not always, right? So sometimes that's not even an option. Sometimes you don't even have a three, but usually typically the dots start at three, five, seven, nine, and 12. So um, if this was a beginner lesson and I was teaching you, what I would do is um, a lot of times I make a fret game. So I'll test people um, on those frets. I'll point to one and make you say it. So you can kind of visualize and get used to that. But yes, know your fret numbers. So um, by dots and you know, even guitars that don't have dots, like my other one, people always talk about, 
um, you actually have them right here. I don't know if you can see them that well. Yep, there you go. So you have dots there too. So uh, over time, you'll start to realize you're not hunched over looking at the fretboard like that. You're actually reading those dots. Cool. All right. Do you use a metronome when tapping? I would suggest you use a metronome always, but, um, you know, oh, thank you, Otto. I really appreciate that. Um, I would say use a metronome as much as you can, or at the very, very least, use your foot to tap along to kind of keep you connected. Um, I have not seen that guitar, but I would like to. Why not? Um, <laughs> hey, guys, that's cool. And thank you, Chris. That's awesome. I appreciate that. All right, so let's go ahead and get to our next topic. So this is going to be Mr. Big Green Tinted 60s Mind. I thought this song was really fun. It has a couple different styles of tapping, so I think you will enjoy it. So on the first string, I start off, and there's going to be other techniques throughout this whole one. So grab your guitars and try and follow along if you can. If not, this video will be on YouTube and Facebook, so you can slow it down, watch it over and over, um, or just watch the part that you want to learn. So on the first string, I go open, which means no fingers on the fretboard, right? Zero, two, zero. So that's called a hammer on pull off because I hammered on and then I pulled off and I only picked once, right? So really simple, zero, two, zero on the first string. So that being the frets, open, second fret, open. Then I pick the open second string. So our first little phrase is, right? That's it. Open two, open on the first string, open on the second string. Then I go back to zero, so so zero on the first string. Then a pull off on the first string, seven, seventh fret, five, zero. So again, really cool. Then you can kind of speed it up once you get a little more used to it. Then I'm gonna go to the third string and I'm gonna hammer on two to four. So second fret, fourth fret, and I use my pointer to my ring finger. That's it, right? Then I do another zero, so, and then a hammer on. Actually, I don't do a zero there. No zero there. So after two to four, I hammer on five to seven on the first string. Then I tap my first tap. So 12th fret, while my finger, my ring finger is holding down that seventh fret, and I go pull off, pull off to zero. So tap 12, pull off to seven, pull off to five, pull off to zero. So let's do that whole thing again. Let me know if you need me to slow any of those parts down or walk you through them. But that's going to be about the first half of this phrase. This is the intro. So if you're listening to that song, it's just the very, very first thing that you're going to hear. Um, hi, Anthony. So just the very first thing that you will hear. Um, yes, if I'm using overdrive, are you also muting it anyway? Yes, I always am. I do it kind of without thinking. And the more you play, too, you'll realize, um, which makes teaching so interesting, is that sometimes you forget all the little things that you're doing to get a sound. So those questions are really helpful and really great. So thank you. So I am muting slightly, and I always mute in between everything when I put my volume knob. My cable sounds a little weird today. It doesn't normally do that. But um, I always kind of just really quick with that volume knob, and I always think that that, even as silly as it sounds, is something great to practice. The more you practice that, it just makes everything sound cooler and cleaner. So if you're playing like... It sounds so much cleaner than it. right Ugh. right so you want to go and then you sound like a pro so just getting really fast with that volume knob just kill that sound right after when you don't want it anymore that's exactly what you should do um Faustio, thank you it is a very sparkly guitar um but yes great question so i do do that so i would definitely say that hi james so I would definitely say get good at that and muting with both hands. So that's something that people don't always talk about. Um, I think Dimebag Daryl is a very good example for that for all his riffs and everything. So I would make sure that you kind of do that and slap down really quick. Um, I can play Eruption, but I haven't played it in a really long time. So I'd be figuring it out on the spot. I don't really want to do that, but maybe I'll do it another time. But um, I do love Eddie Van Halen. I used to make Van Halen print shoes all the time. 
Um, how do you tune down a drop D? So Robert, you can tune down a drop D by matching your sixth string to your fourth string and doing it by ear since that is an open D note. Or you can just take your tuner and depending on what kind of tuner it is, you might need to click the flat button twice or just, you know, on my phone I just select D and then I tune to that. But you just want to tune to D, so down a whole step. So E, down to E flat, down to D. Um, but by ear you can easily do it by just matching those two and then lowering, lowering, lowering until you're matched. All right. Um, hi, Pete. Thank you. That's really cool. I appreciate it. All right. So let's get back to green tinted 60s mind. I bet a lot of time has actually passed. Yes, we are already halfway through. So I'm going to get back to this. But yes, keep asking questions. Thank you. I uh, appreciate you guys going along. So that's our first half, right? So um, I love this song because it's not, I don't think it's as hard as it sounds which is always really fun. <laughs> um, I think it's a really nice, even though it sounds really hard and I'm sure parts of it are, it's a really nice intro into tapping. So after that, I'm gonna go tap the 17th fret, but I'm gonna be hammering on from 10, this is all in the first string, 10 to 12. So you're going, and then really quickly, I kind of already have to have my finger there. This one, it's so fast though, and it's starting right there that it's almost exactly at the same time. So when you're doing that, try and make sure your hands both get there at the same time. I know that sounds silly, but the faster you get and everything, it'll get easier. So I tap first, pull off to that 10, right? Really similar to the kind of tapping we were doing earlier. Slam my finger down to 12. I actually think this part, right, we're gonna do right now, and the little part right next to it that's very similar, are the hardest parts because of how quickly you need to get to those notes. So um, just making it clean. It's not really that hard, but just making sure it's clean. Uh, very, very important to be clean. So tap 17, hammer on 10 to 12. Then right after, we're gonna tap 17 and then hammer on five to seven. So make sure you make that jump. So we tap 17 and then jump down and tap five to seven. So let me, yes. So let's try that out. Then I'm gonna actually go, so that's what I was saying, just practicing that back and forth too. Whoops, I need to get there right. This one's kinda weird because they're not supposed to be next to each other, but you can also go two, three, four. probably actually recommend that. It gets a little confusing if you do it back to back. Um, but ready? Then I tap 16 and I actually slide my finger down a half step to four, to zero. Then I slam it back on four, slam my pinky on seven. So like this. So just that part, tap 16, four, zero, four, seven. And then my tap hand comes 12, Slide it to 15, back to 12, open. So, and then pull up, pull up, pull up. But um, let's get back to that tap side and focus on that. So that was what I was saying it was my favorite part. I just thought that was so cool when I heard it. So um, here we go, 16 and four. Then I tap 12 and I actually move it. So how I get that slide is I keep the pressure down and I can get that noise. So slap it down, move it to 15, still down, then pull off to seven, to four, to zero. And that's it. So that's that entire part. So ready? So ready? So that is the entire thing and I'll play it all together. I hope you are following along. I hope you like this part. Um, I do know the intro for that song, but I haven't played it in a minute. Um, what's the fastest lick that you can play? I don't really focus on playing other people's licks as much um, as I just kind of like to improvise and jam, but uh, I can speed pick pretty fast. I've uh, been doing it for a while and that's kind of my go-to thing. I don't know why, but speed picking has always been kind of my thing. Um, but other things like sweeping and stuff, I definitely put a lot more work into. That would be awesome. 
We will have to get you to show us how to play Pantera Cemetery Gates. I would love to do a lesson on Pantera Cemetery Gates. If you're on YouTube, these videos actually transition. So this whole chat gets erased and then we go ahead and go to something else. And so when you see that, do that. Um, Benjamin, I've been playing the whole time, buddy. But I am teaching right now, so that's why I duck. Anyways, so um, let's go ahead and put that all together. All right, so that is my second one that I love. Um, yes, I don't know why. For some reason, you guys always, like, heckle me to play other songs and, like, not talk. But I'm hired to be a teacher, so I have to talk. But I can play, too. I love to play. But, um, I do have to, it is my responsibility to get the topic and lesson explained. So, um, yes, hopefully you are following along and appreciate that. Cool. So, um, let's see if we have any time before Q&A. Before we switch to Q&A, I do want to give you guys a discount code for following along with me today. So I really appreciate that. As always, um, I do really want you guys to focus on having your own voice on the guitar. So this is for our Killer Guitar Control Secrets. And this focuses on how to be the best you, how to get the music in your head, out of your hands. So follow this link for a discount code for following along with me today. So this is, again, for our Killer Guitar Control Secrets. What we are going to do is we're going to be going over technique, which is what colors everything. Our technique can be our speed picking. It can be, you know, our vibrato, our bend. It can be our slides, hammer on, anything like that. So kind of what I like to think is what colors everything, like colors our phrasing. Our fretboard knowledge, which is our arpeggios, our scales, our chords, knowing the notes, somebody had asked a question about knowing your fretboard, that's our fretboard knowledge, and then our hand brain connection. So getting what's in your head, out of your hands. So if you are the type of person that falls asleep with music that you just can't get out of your hands, this is for you. It is more the subject of how does Hendrix become Hendrix? How did Paul Gilbert become Paul Gilbert? How did Steve Vai become Steve Vai? This is not for how to play just like that person. It's the concept of how to become a great yourself. So to get your own voice on the guitar. So make sure you check this out. Yep, how did Frank Zappa become Frank Zappa? How did Joe Satriani become Joe Satriani? Randy Rhodes, whoever you like. Um, Eric Clapton, Jimmy Page, this is, you know, that concept. And what I really love about this is that's not something that is always, like, it's not something that's always taught. A lot of times it's how to play just like somebody else. And this is not focused on that. So this is something very special and rare. So make sure you check this out and get your discount code for following along. Um, play by the heart. That's the secret, right? That is the secret, I guess, if you summed it up. But the secret is, it's the secret of how to play from your heart. So I think a lot of us struggle and feel confused. You know, you see all these great guitar players and you wonder how can I be like them? And this is exactly how to do that. So check that out. All right, I'm checking on you on YouTube. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, James. No, it's fine. I honestly, I don't mind playing for you guys, but it's just funny because sometimes I am, you know, my job as an instructor. So it's to talk about what we're doing. Because if you watch me play it, what difference is that than when you're just watching somebody else play? If I play and explain it, that's where you're gonna learn. So the whole point and why sometimes there's more talking than you would expect is because you aren't just here to watch me play, you're here to watch me teach you how to play these things. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I know. We don't do tabs on these, but we do do tabs on all of our lessons on our YouTube. So if you are not familiar with our YouTube channel, make sure you follow along at Guitar Control's YouTube. So youtube.com slash guitar control. And there is seriously folders of every teacher, like folders by teacher, folders by topic, by these Guitar Control live streams. So check them out. All right. Cool. Do you also play hard rock on a Strat? I don't actually play a Strat very much, but if you give me a Strat, why would, why not? Um, oh, that's awesome, Eric. We're glad to have you here. That's very cool. All right, so the last tapping thing I will show you while we still have a little bit of time is actually one of mine. So um, I will show you that. It's a tapping like I kind of made up and it used to be uh, an instrumental song I started, but I'm gonna change, or a vocal song actually, but I'm gonna change it into an instrumental song. I've been working on a lot of instrumental stuff, but it's kind of a fun one. So it's not super easy, um, not super hard, 
but hopefully you follow along and enjoy it. <laughs> So for those of you that were asking me, um, are you, how are you controlling that distortion? What are you doing? So what I am doing, um, <laughs> hi Rick. Um, oh no, I know Rick. That was, that's totally cool. It is an interesting question though. It is hard to not have tabs. Um, so, oh, thanks Nick. Uh, so what I'm doing in this one is it's just a little different. It feels a little different when you're playing it. So it'll probably feel different when you play it. Uh, you want to see me play acoustic guitar. I do play acoustic guitar. So I guess I get a little typecast in metal, but I actually sing and write pop songs too. Um, I grew up with my dad loving blues, so I like to play blues. Um, and I like all sorts of different stuff, but I, there is something about plugging in to an, a guitar and, and doing some shred stuff. Why not, right? Um, for me at least, I think it's really fun. Hi David. So let's go ahead and try this one. So uh, why I think this one is cool is because it is a little bit different. So on that sixth string, I'm going to slow it down. So on the sixth string, and I'm going to actually try to figure out exactly how to explain what I'm doing. I've been doing this for so long. And so like the faster and faster you get at these things, you'll start to be doing those pull-offs quicker. So when you're first starting out, if you're not familiar with tapping or you're not comfortable tapping, try to exaggerate these motions. And that can be said and delivered into anything. Like when I'm sweeping, I try to exaggerate my sweeps when I'm practicing. If you're speed picking, exaggerate things. Exaggerate the downbeat. Exaggerate different things when you're practicing so that, you know, you really get that in your head. And then when you go to play live or do any other stuff, you can kind of back off a little bit. Uh, so on the sixth string, I'm tapping. Have my pointer placed down on the fifth fret. Six string. So my first tap is just 12 to zero. And then I'm going to go to the fifth string. So just, that's it. I tap 12, pull off to the fifth fret, six string. Then I'm going to go ahead and bring my ring finger down like a power chord. And I'm going to grab the seventh fret, fifth string. And so this part, it starts to get a little harder. So I tap, then I bring, still tapping the 12th fret, but you know, that power chord. So I'm tapping now, fifth string, seventh fret, 12. Then I place my pinky down on the eighth fret while I tap the 13th fret back to the 12th fret, so like this. So you're not only concentrating on one finger. I think that's what can feel a little hard, so. Let's actually make that into two parts. And you know, when we do move it up that half step, I'm just doing the same thing. So you can easily the same concept, but everything moved up a half step. My entire fretting hand is moved up a half step, and my tapping finger is moved up a half step. So every single note, so everything. So ready? Our first part was. And if you just need to slow that down and break that down and play that over and over again, that is totally fine. So another thing that I do when I am playing things is I just break things down. If I'm learning something that I find to be difficult or out of my norm or anything, I will slow it down and break it down and focus on whatever is harder for me. So instead of trying to do the entire thing, if you think none of it's easy, you're going to waste a lot of time. So I, I don't like to say it. I don't know how to explain I want to find a friendlier way to say what I'm saying, but I always say it's practicing smart. Not that there's ways that aren't practicing smart, but it's really cutting down that time and focusing on problem areas instead of everything, because you'll end up wasting a lot of time if you're just practicing something you're already good at. But if you focus on that problem area and you give it extra attention and then you bring it back into everything, you're going to make the most out of your time. So we'll say making the most out of your time. Um, any practice smart, smart to practice. So that's our first thing, our first move. So again, 12th fret, tap, pull off to pointers on the fifth fret, sixth string. Then on the fifth string, I place my ring finger down on the seventh fret, fifth string, and I tap 12, 13, 12. Oh, I'm sorry, and I place my pinky down. So let me do that one again. I tap, uh, so seven, 12, pinky on eight, and then I tap the 13th fret, lift up my pinky and tap 12 so but just like that so that's our first part then I bring my ring finger 
to the octave. <laughs> So bring my ring finger to the octave, uh, ring finger to the octave, which is the seventh fret, fourth string, tap twelve, then pinky back. So pinky back to the eighth fret, fifth string, tap thirteen, twelve, and then it's kind of zero, but I'm really barring. So now I, I switched. You don't have to bar the whole time, but then I'm grabbing that fifth fret, fourth, uh, fifth fret, fifth string, and then I just repeat. move it up a half step. So that's a pretty fun tapping lick. That's mine. I think it's fun. Uh, hopefully you enjoy it too. Uh, let's see how we are doing on time. We're over. So um, I hope you enjoyed those three different licks. We did our Paul Gilbert Green Tinted Sixties Mine. We did a little bit of a Randy Rhodes vibe and then we did one of mine. So remember when you're tapping you do want to pay attention to muting. Um, I'm muting especially with using distortion. So I'm muting with my palm mute in hand. I think I brought up Dimebag Terrell. A lot of his riffs, he does that. You can also mute with your fretting hand. The best way is to actually do both. So I think that's really good. Um, Steph, can you do a solo guitar of your choice on your wedding day? That would be so dope. We are actually, my fiance is an incredible guitar player, and we are gonna do a heavy metal version of the wedding march. We're not gonna do it live though, because I think that we should just focus on wedding stuff, because we're always doing shred stuff, but I think that will be fun. Um, no, it is not a C shape on my left hand. I'm kind of in A minor. So yeah, I'm just moving around. Um, awesome. Thank you, Rick. Cool. So yes. Um, thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and we'll do Q&A now. So if you have any questions, ask me some questions. Hopefully this led you into some cool tapping ideas. Hopefully they help you make your own, anything like that. Oh, thank you, Raymond. That's sweet. Um, I'm going to give you guys that discount code one more time for hanging out with me. So I really appreciate you guys returning, checking out these lessons. I will be back Thursday. So if you're here Thursday, I'll have a new topic. We can go over something totally different then feel free to leave your own topics topics of your choice we are listening and we will do them so make sure you send them in uh, again this is for our killer guitar control secrets so make sure you check this out playing from your heart how did clapton become clapton's how did steve Vai become steve Vai? how did jimmy page become jimmy page this is not something that you get in magazines so um or anything really you know at, like i've said a million times the best most fulfilling part of the guitar for me was really when I got my own voice on the guitar. So try to, you know, find ways to do that. Take inspiration from these lessons, take inspiration from little clips that we do, and always try to make things your own. So if you saw me do a tap slide and you thought that was cool, do something different. Take that tap slide and mix in some other techniques and see what you can come up with. Because the options are, are endless, right? So try to keep that mentality and have fun with it. And even if some of you are saying you don't know a lot of theory or things like that, this DVD is going to cover all of these things. This DVD is going to cover our technique, our fretboard knowledge, and our handbrake connection. And um, you don't have to always, you know, rely on that um, theory or anything either. So try and express yourself because the guitar is fun. So I always think a mixture of both is good. Maybe a lesson with a jam track. That would be awesome. The only reason I don't use them is because of the way that the audio works when I have to stream to both platforms. But maybe I can figure out a way to do it. Um, I could, I guess, but I have to wear headphones the whole time. That's the only reason I don't do it. Awesome. Is tap and slide also what vibrato, oh, Beto Brado did on weight? I don't know because I haven't listened to that song. But it might be if you hear him do something right here. It could just be a slide, but a tap slide is when we go in from that tap and keep that pressure down. All right, of course, you are very welcome, Jim. Thank you all for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Again, I will be back on uh, Tuesday, sorry, Thursday. So Thursday at 7 Central, we'll have a brand new topic. So go ahead and tune in. I will give you your discount code one more time. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate it. It's always good to see you guys. Um, and yeah, keep trying to make these licks your own. If you're interested in this DVD, thank you for hanging out and make sure you use your discount code. So I will see you all 
on Thursday.